All right, everyone, welcome back. Another video from Mr. Land, 7th grade science flip classroom titled Food Chains and Energy Transfer. But before we get into the lesson, let's remind you on your Cornell notes that you have with you. You'll need them as you watch the video so that you can answer some of the questions. On the left hand side, you have your essential questions. On the right hand side, you write your answers down. And then we will use that in class, turn that in, do a little grade. All right, very excited to be here with you. Let's get the presentation started. Quick reminder, when watching a YouTube video, don't forget good skills when you watch, you want to be able to pause. So if you pause the button, I'll freeze and I'll go like this. Oh, just kidding. No, I was frozen. Not, not fooled you. Totally fooled you. Or you can rewind the video of the thing I just said. You, yep, yep, yep. you can rewind the video of the thing I just said. That way you can hear it again or you can rewrite it down. Whatever you need to do. Good YouTube watching skills when doing a video like this. So let's begin title food chains and energy transfers with Mr. Lamb. So by the end of the lesson, we want to be able to uh, know some hard facts. For instance, how does energy travel through our ecosystem when animals are eating? And we are animals, so we eat. So how is it that energy reaches us? What does it pass through in our ecosystem? What are the roles or the jobs of animals as they are eating? Because they do have a job when they eat. And then, of course, you want to be able to make food chains at the very end. By the time this lesson is over, we'll understand them. And then in class, we'll practice them. And then you'll really be a master of food chains. So, um, yes, food. <clears throat> food is delicious. Look at that. Hamburgers and pizza and tacos. So delicious. Oh, Mr. Lamb took it away. I'm so sorry. Before we can get into the idea of yummy food, let's understand where does it really come from. So what is food really? Well, food is energy. And where is that source of that food? And how does it get from where it begins to us? And what is its journey? Where does it go through? So the question is, where does food really come from? Well, it's energy. So we live to eat that food that is essentially energy. So our bodies are needing energy. Our digestive systems, which we just learned about, and we learned about how the digestive system has chemical and physical reactions and interactions. So what is the source? What is the root source of all the energy that makes up food? Take a guess. Take a guess. Here comes the answer. Are you ready for the answer? The answer is coming. The answer is the sun. The sun, that beautiful star that makes up the center of our solar system. That is where food comes from. Think about that next time you're chowing down on a burger. That used to be light. That sun is called radiant energy. It is a wave, but this is not a physics video, so we're not going to talk about that too much. It shines to the earth. And when that energy enters our ecosystem, we have to be able to use it. Now, that means that you could literally go outside, open your mouth, and eat some sunshine. But humans can't do that, and that would be ridiculous because we'd look stupid while we do it. So there is a class, a group of organisms that can actually eat the sun. And we just studied them. We just learned about them. Who could this be? Think about it. Here it comes. Here it comes. That would be these guys right here. Plants. Plants can eat the sun. And when I say eat, I say eat in quotes like that because they can actually use their chloroplasts and chlorophyll to take radiant sun and make food through photosynthesis, which we just learned about not too long ago. So we need these little guys out there in the world so that we can harness the energy of the sun for our food. They're super duper important. All food chains have to start with a, with a plant. So let's follow the flow. Let's look at an example of a single chain. Here is a single chain of energy. I have the sun here on the left, of course. We always know it has to be there. No sun, no energy. And then I notice that there is that beautiful plant. That plant is our energy starter. It eats that, that sun. And then we notice that the animals are following. Notice the arrow is there in a food chain. This is very important because a lot of kids make this mistake. The arrow has to go in the direction of the energy, not in the direction of who's eating. Big difference there. So notice the sun gives energy to the producer who gives energy to the mouse when the mouse eats it. 
but we don't draw the arrow the opposite way. We follow the energy. Very important that you always follow the energy in a food chain. If you put the arrow in correctly, then the whole chain is totally, uh, totally wrong. So big, big lesson right there. And here is a food chain with a few organisms and the sun. Very predictable. We can become masters of food chains by learning what are the roles of animals in them. And then before you know it, you'll just start seeing food chains, constructing food chains, and it'll be super easy in the order that they are in the chain. So plants have to come first because they eat the sun. They use the sun as its energy. We call them producers. Producers harness the sun's energy. Your food chain must always start with a producer. If your food chain does not have a producer, it is completely incorrect. Remember that. If you ever see that on a test by any chance or maybe a quiz, no, no producer at the front, no correction. That, that, that's incorrect. That's totally wrong. Let's follow that a little bit. An animal that does the eating of the animals that they use for energy is called a consumer. The consumer consumes, it eats. You are a consumer because you eat. Koala bears eat, seals eat, sharks eat, they consume, pandas eat and consume. Okay, so any animal that would eat another one for its energy, for food, is a consumer. Excellent. So consumers are broken up into categories. There are three categories for us to really focus on. So we'll start with the first category. So the first animals that eat in a chain have to be able to eat the plants. We call them the herbivores. Notice the prefix there, herb, H-E-R-B, that stands for plant. These are strict vegetarian animals. They eat only plants, like a cow, for instance, eats only grass. That is a herbivore. They do not eat anything else. They strictly eat plant. That is a herbivore. Notice that little rabbit with his little cheeks on, right? That is a herbivore. The next category is an omnivore. Omni is a prefix, O-M-N-I, that means both so these animals can eat both plants and other animals. Monkeys are omnivores because they can eat fruit and meats. Raccoons, oh my God, raccoons are nasty, disgusting, but they can eat both. Then at the, the end of the food chain, we have our very cool carnivores. C-A-R-N-I, it's in Spanish, carne, carne. They are strictly meat eaters, eagles, lions, sharks, killer whales, they are carnivores. Those are three categories we must know very well. And we may not know all animals identity in a food chain, but if you, if you learn your predictability, you'll get it right. I promise. Let's move on. So consumers can also be divided into two other roles. Here's the first one. We have our, our prey. Our prey is an animal that is hunted. So in our food chain, when we see an animal that is being eaten, that is prey because it's being consumed. It's being eaten by another one, probably a bigger animal or one with fangs and big teeth. No, I'm just kidding. Not always the case. The animal that does the eating is the predator. That is the one that eats. It hunts the other animal for food. This is important to know in a relationship, in a food chain or a food web. So here's a food chain. Can you identify the prey and the predator? Pause right here. The prey would be the animal that is eaten or hunted. And you would say that there's our producer at the beginning, of course, our prey is our mouse and our snake. Notice that the mouse is eaten by the snake and the snake is eaten by the Eagle, very good. So who are the predators? You would say the eagle, you'd be correct. There's another predator though, watch. That snake is a predator, why? Because it eats the mouse. The eagle eats the snake. Big difference right there, okay? These chains can sometimes be a little different. So we want to get used to chains and seeing how they're different. Notice they are single energy transfers, meaning I see only one set of arrows going in one direction. That's why we call it a chain, like a chain in a fence. So these chains have a little bit of a difference in them. Look at them carefully. Now I see the producers are at the beginning, so that's correct. But then what's different about these examples here? 
These examples have different consumers. So chains can be sometimes very small chains. For example, the first one is a three-linked food chain that has two consumers, a rat and an owl, and one producer for three total, three organisms total. The middle example has four. The bottom example has five organisms. That's a long five-link food chain right there. So chains can be changed not just on paper, but by you when you start to create them. So we're going to learn how to do this in class. At the very bottom of your Cornell notes, I want to ask you to practice one correct food chain. Notice the animals here, the pictures. You may either write these out or you can draw them if you want to be a little extra. I want for you to put these animals in the correct food chain order. And there is an order they should be in. And it has to be correct, okay? Remember, who starts off the chain? What kind of role should follow? What kind of animal should eat as the chain goes along? What kind of animal would eat as a predator? Okay, think about those questions. Then I want for you to follow those questions and I want you to name the producer, name all the consumers, name the herbivore, name the prey, and name the predators. It's one food chain, it's very simple, nothing more to it, okay? And then in class, we're gonna practice some more on paper and then we're gonna do some, some crafts and some cool stuff with some little some little, uh, little animals that I have. <laughs> they like to eat each other. Okay, cool. So, thank you kids. If you need help, go back, rewind, listen, watch again, go through your Cornell notes, get good answers, and we'll talk to you tomorrow in class. And as always, at the end of every video, I wanna say hasta manana, iguana, so look at my cool dad joke. What you gonna what what you gonna do? I'm gonna just chill. Bam. So I wanna say thank you, kids, and I'll see you soon.